Hope Church. You, as you know, we're in the middle of a series that deals with overcoming, overcoming various obstacles and sins that we face in our lives. And that's only possible because Jesus has come and not just undone sin and death, but actually overcome sin and death. And if we're joined to Him by faith, then that is at work, that power that brought Him up from the dead is at work in us too. Paul said that he, he prayed for the Ephesians in chapter 1. He said, I pray for you that you would know the power in you, that, that, that same power that brought Jesus up from the dead at work in your own life. And so we, as we face the various obstacles of living in this world that's broken, that's condemned, that's uh, filled with sin, we can overcome the things that we face. Um, we're in a weird situation of we're in an already and not yet. We look forward to when Jesus will return and make all things right, all things new. And that has already broken in. We've been born again, but it's not yet here in its fullness. And so we won't see final victory over these things, but we can overcome and make progress. Now, we live in a time of a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty. And in the past several months, there have been things coming at us from all sides, from concerns over personal health, family health, public health, uh, shortages over toilet paper and meat and coins and hand sanitizer. Now concerns about what are we going to do when the kids go back to school and how are we going to work this? Uh, concerns about justice and about safety. So many things that could get us tied up in knots. Well, God's Word speaks to our anxieties. Now, I want to share a little excerpt from you or to you uh, from a book called A Small Book for the Anxious Heart. It, you can see it basically fits in the size of my hand. But here the author, Ed Wells, he says a general rule about fears and anxiety is that they will not lose their power unless examined. As you do that, the more words, the better. In general, the more words you have for something, the more you understand it. So consider what is making you anxious and just give some more vocabulary to it to help cut away the power. Then he explains some different types of anxiety, he talks about fear, anxiety specifically, panic attacks, stress. And then he goes on to say, your task is to accumulate words and descriptions for what you experience and then speak to the Lord. If you haven't spoken to your friends and family, speak with them too. The words will probably come quickly as you speak with family and friends. It might be more difficult to actually speak to the Lord. We're invited to speak to the living God and to pour out our souls about what's going on inside. And then he gives us a prayer from Psalm 55. It says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. I am restless in my complaint, and I moan. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. See, our fear and anxiety wants action. It wants quick action to take away whatever it is. And that's not always what God does. But when we talk to others about what's going on, that's one of the biggest things that can help us. It provides other perspective. It provides encouragement. But Welch says that it actually the reason it's so helpful is because it imitates that even more important conversation that we need to have with God. We don't just keep it horizontal. We need to go vertical with our anxieties and take them to the Lord because He has more compassion. He has more wisdom and more power than any other person. And He invites us to come and He is near so I hope that you'll join us Sunday as we look more about overcoming anxiety in our lives. And I hope that you bring a friend, whether you join by live stream or you come in person. But if, you, if you're anxious or you know someone who's anxious, this is for you. I look forward to seeing you.